My name is Khalid, and I work as a security guard in one of the companies that has several branches in my country. The branch in which I currently work was not suitable for me. The pay was weak and did not meet my needs, but I was saying, oh God, this or nothing. One day the manager came and told me that I would be transferred to another branch in the desert, that the salary was very high, and that I would only work at night. I liked the idea and told him, okay, I will go to the new branch. But inside me, I was very happy because of the large salary, because I would be able to collect it, buy my house, get married, and have a family. Indeed, I traveled to the new branch, and the author of the story says that the company was isolated on land, located in an empty place, and there was nothing around it as if it were a military zone. When I entered the company, I met an old employee who had been working there for a long time, and he told me that the majority of people who work there are Asian, and the place you will guard will have a small room for you, and in it, you will find everything you need, a television, a refrigerator, and a bed. In front of your room will be the big door of the company. An old person who is also a guard came and said to me, I will tell you something, my son, and listen to me carefully. You and I will exchange work for 12 hours. I am from six in the morning until six in the evening and you from evening to morning. I told him there was no problem, uncle. I am still young and can handle working at night. He said to me, it is not that easy, but I will advise you, my son, do not open the company door to anyone at night, even if you hear anything. Do not open it to anyone, no matter how loud it is, he tells you to open the door, because the employees only serve in the morning, and no one comes to us at night, even if the manager comes and says, open the door, don't open the door to him. Go now to rest, and in the evening come to guard the place. And in fact, this is what I did. I went to the small room, changed my clothes, and rested a little while my work time arrived. Six o'clock struck. I prepared myself, food, and everything I would need for the next 12 hours. I met the elderly man again and he told me, don't forget my advice to you. Do not open the place to anyone, no matter who they are. I told him, don't worry uncle, I won't open the gate for anyone. And then he left. It's 11 o'clock at night now. I told myself to walk around the place a little and explore it, and I picked up my flashlight and started walking around the place and exploring it, but I was surprised by something strange. I started hearing from behind the fence because the entire company was surrounded by the security fence, the sound of men talking and the sound of a donkey crowing. I did not understand anything and I said to myself when I came here, there was no one, just me and the empty place. Who did I hear them talking to? Perhaps only shepherds, travelers, or caravans might pass by here. And this is what I said to myself. But the voices were audible. I didn't understand or I didn't understand what they were saying. I liked the atmosphere and said to go and get my coffee and sit outside the room and take in this atmosphere. I prepared what belonged to me and sat down and I was comfortable and I wasn't afraid or anything. While I was sitting and enjoying my time and my work, I turned to the left side in the direction of the gate and the narrator of the story says, I swear to you that I saw a man approaching the gate, and his features were not clear, and his appearance was not clear either. Here I remembered the voice of the old man telling me, do not open the gate to anyone no matter what. I stood up and started to focus on the person near the gate and said, who are you over there? But he did not answer me, but when he approached and arrived near the gate, his features began to appear. He was a Bedouin man and he was wearing Bedouin clothes. I said to him, who are you? He said, peace be upon you. And I accepted his greetings. I asked him again, who are you? He told me, I am just your neighbor. I just wanted to breathe the air and I saw the lights of this place and I came to drink some coffee with you and chat and keep you company on this night while I was alone. At that moment, his words were very normal and kind and I decided to open the gate for him. This is what I also needed just someone to chat with and keep me entertained until the morning comes. The man entered and things were very normal because he was a normal man. I told him, let's go inside the room, it would be better there and talk. But he refused and said, no, no, just let us hear, because the place is beautiful and the atmosphere is also comfortable. We sat down and started talking and laughing together. I made him a cup of coffee and he took the cup from me 
and I swear to you that he never drank from it. He took the cup and put it next to him, and this is not one of the values of the people of the desert, because among us the people of the desert are among the best of God's creation, generous and welcoming, and they eat and drink anything with you, and they are never arrogant towards you. That's why I was surprised by what this person did. He said to me, I want to ask you for a request here. I was very surprised how he wanted a request from me that night, and I started waiting for his request. In my eyes, the man was normal and kind. He even started asking me about my condition, my situation, and where I live. And he even asked me about my name and the names of my parents. The cup of coffee was still in front of him. He had not drunk from it, and the man appeared normal. I was answering his questions, and I said to myself, he is just keeping me entertained at night. But the strange thing that I noticed in this man is that when I asked him, he did not answer me, and he ran away from my questions and repeated his questions over and over again to the point that I began to be surprised by how often he repeated the same questions. But suddenly the man jumped from his place and got up as he hit the table with his knees and overturned everything on it. Coffee and cups. I told him what's wrong with you, you didn't drink anything and got up quickly and turned over everything on the table. What's wrong with you? He apologized to me and told me, I apologize to you and to whom. I must go now and I want to go now. I miss my children and perhaps there is a problem with them. I said there was no problem, so you sat with me and chatted with me on my first day. So there is no need to be arrogant. Thank you for accompanying me even though you asked a lot of questions and I was the only one talking and laughing. I started laughing with him and he said, I'm sorry, my son, I'm sorry. He went away and I never saw him again since then. That man, who to me was an ordinary person from the desert who grazed during the day and stayed up at night, went away. But the thing that remained in my mind the most was that I gave him a summary of my entire life, but he never spoke about himself. I mean how I trusted him and gave him all my personal information. And then I remembered the words of the uncle who works with me when he told me not to open the gate for anyone, no matter who they are. Her fear began to overwhelm me and I began to think that something was strange. And at that hour I gathered everything and went into the room, turned on the television, put it on a channel dedicated to the Quran and strained the volume to the maximum level. I sat in my seat drinking my coffee and talking to myself. A little more remains and the sun will shine and the old man will come to take my place and I will not tell him about the person who was with me. It did not take long until the sun rose and the old man came and said to me, I hope your first night went well. I told him, thank God it went well. I really wanted to tell him about that person but I was afraid of his reaction because he gave me a lot of advice. As I was walking on my way, I thought to myself why I wouldn't tell him. Maybe he knows that person. I went to my uncle and told him what happened yesterday. Then the uncle turned to me and I saw his eyes widen and he just started looking at me and said to me in a voice full of fear, don't tell me that you brought him here in the middle of the night. I told him yes. I took him in and welcomed him uncle and gave him a cup of coffee, but they did not drink it. Uncle told me, but I advised you not to open the gate to anyone. He told me that whoever I saw, my son was not human. Only here, I started to look at him and told him what you mean by that he is not human. He said that the employees who were there before you always came to them at night and tortured them, and they all asked to be transferred from here, and they did not spend a single day here I told you not to open the gate for anyone, but you did not listen to me. I told him, uncle, just tell me who this person is. He said to me, my son, that person is not human. Didn't you understand that he is not human and that he is a jinn? Here I became confused and was firm in my words to him. What do you mean by the jinn, uncle? He was just an ordinary person talking to me as an ordinary person, and I made him coffee. Will the jinn sit with me like this? All I know about Jin is that they always hurt you. Uncle said, My son, I only told you the truth. I did not speak and said to myself, This old man is sensing me, and he has lost his mind. 
I told him I was going to rest, bye, and entered the room. He wanted to go to sleep so I could return to work in the evening. While I was trying to sleep, I started thinking about what happened yesterday, how the person came and did not answer my questions, and only he was asking and I started to say, maybe the uncle is talking seriously? Is it possible that it is a djinn? This is impossible. The author of the story says that I could not sleep at all until I started reading the Quran and got up at five in the evening. I prepared my food and drink and what I would need. I went to my uncle and asked him, Uncle, is what you said this morning really true? The uncle swore to me that everything he said was true, and I will repeat to you, do not open the gate for anyone, Khalid, and if you hear anything, do not open it. As he was leaving, turned to me and said, I will give you another piece of advice. Leave the Quran on the television and never turn it off. And do not go out. Stay where you are until I come in the morning. I told him, Okay, uncle, I will carry out your words. In fact, I did everything that my uncle advised me to do. I sat in the room with the Quran playing until dawn, but I felt suffocated in the room. I wanted to go out and get some air to rest. I went out and the weather was very normal, but shortly I heard the voice of a girl crying loudly coming from the gate. My heart froze. I turned towards the gate and saw the girl near the gate sitting with her back to me, crying. I went to her and asked her, What's wrong with you, my daughter? Why are you crying when I call her, My daughter, what's wrong with you? But she doesn't answer me or turn to me, just sitting and crying. When I approached her, I found her sitting with her hair covering her face. I couldn't see her features. I started talking to her and asking her questions, but she did not want to pay attention to me and would not talk to me. But I felt that there was movement behind me. When I turned around, I saw that a black dog was sitting and looking at me. Where did this dog come from? Because of my extreme fear, I turned to the girl again, but she had disappeared. I turned in the direction of the dog and found that he had also disappeared there. I swear to you that my heart dropped from its place from the intensity of terror. I could not move. I started reading the Quran to myself and ran towards the room and locked the door and the windows. The curtains came down and the Quran was recited in a loud voice. I was sitting there in shock until I heard the sound of knocking on the door of the room and it was very violent. Who is this who is knocking on the door in this way? And I began to say, who is the knocker? I was very afraid because the knocking was violent on the door and even the windows were shaking from their places. And I heard the sound of glass breaking, but I could not move from my place. And after that, I began to hear the sound of stones being thrown on the windows. It was as if someone was throwing stones at me and I was surprised where all this was coming from. I wanted to scream and do something, but I couldn't. All I could do was read the Quran out loud. And the louder I raised my voice, the more the stones on the windows rose and the more violently the knocking on the door became. I was screaming and saying, Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, I seek refuge in God from the accursed Satan. Shortly after that, the sounds began to disappear little by little. My eyes were focused on what was under the door and I saw the silhouette of someone walking outside and his steps from under the door. Who is that outside? I started screaming, who are you? Who is moving under the door? I thought to myself, maybe the employees or the uncle. And I started calling them by their names, but no one answered. But those legs stopped in their place and turned towards me and started hitting the door hard again for the first, second, and third time. Here I felt like I was going to lose consciousness, and I just kept screaming and screaming and seeking refuge in God from the accursed Satan. I felt like my soul would be ripped out of its place by the force of the terror I was experiencing. Then I heard the sound of the dawn call to prayer, and everything disappeared. I could no longer hear anything, and I could not even leave the room to perform ablution. I only had a small bottle of water with which I performed ablution and asked God to save me. I was just waiting for the morning to see the employees enter so that I could rest. Calm down and leave the room. Just put yourself in my place. Do not underestimate what happened to me. 
It is not an easy thing to live through when you are alone in a desert place. The only human being there is me, and something like this can happen to you. Then my uncle came and I told him everything that happened. He said to me, I told you from the beginning, do not open doors, do not receive anyone, and do not go anywhere if you see something there. There were many employees before you, but they could not complete even a single day because of what they lived and saw here. Tomorrow is your third day here. If you want to build your life on this salary, do not open or receive anyone. Stay in your room until the morning and your guard ends. I told him, Uncle, this is what I will do. I will not open or receive anyone from today, and I will not repeat this mistake. Then I went to my room, but I could not sleep, and I had not slept for two days. I only slept for five hours. It was guard time again. I stayed in the room until nine at night and never left. Then I started hearing the sound of a radio, and that sound was coming from behind the gate. I opened the door of my room to see that the sound was coming from the direction of the gate, and I said, how is this renewed? Why is this sound? I closed the door and returned to my place until eleven at night. I opened the door and saw in the direction of the fence, with my flashlight pointing in the same direction, and I saw a dog panting loudly as if it was going to die of thirst. I approached that dog and forgot all the advice, and everything happened to me. What I am doing now is wrong. When I approached the dog, he got up and came in my direction and approached me and started sniffing at me, and he was thirsty. This dog was from behind the fence, and it was as if he was pleading with me to the point that he started licking my shoes, and I started saying, This poor dog is probably the shepherd here, and he is lost and thirsty. I entered my room and prepared something for him to drink on a plastic plate. I went to him, opened the gate, gave him a drink, and closed the gate. The author of the story says, I swear to you, he did not drink any of the water. I said to myself, maybe he is hungry. I went back to my room and got something for him to eat. I raised my head in the direction of the dog, but I did not find him. The dog disappeared from his place. But the biggest surprise was that when I got close to me, that same man came out of nowhere. The uncle told me that he was not human and that he was a djinn. He says when I headed towards him, I could not move from my place, as if someone was holding my leg so that I would not move, and he was looking at me, his face full of anger, and smiling at me. I was as if I had been charmed, watching him without blinking. He said to me, Are you still here? Haven't you gone home, boy? Are you still working here? Still want to work here? Are you still patient with this thing? Listen, boy, I came to warn you. Everything you have seen so far is considered nothing. What you will see since tomorrow. If you stay here, you will see torture of all kinds. If you want to return to your family in peace, do not stay here. I came to tell you what they plan to do to you. I am one of the peaceful jinn who does not harm anyone. But there are others here, and they are watching you and all your movements, and they want to make your whole life miserable. And I advise you to stay away from here. The author of the story says, I hear all this, and I cannot utter a word, and I cannot move until he turned and went into the darkness. At that time, I felt as if my feet had a heavy weight on them and it disappeared. I quickly ran to the room, locked it, and just started reading the Quran and waiting for the morning to get out of this hell. But there was a very violent knock on the door and the sound of laughter from afar as if more people were laughing and whispering about me. I could not look at the door due to the force of its movement and vibration while I was reading the Quran out loud, and I heard laughter and people talking outside the room, but I did not leave the room until my uncle came in the morning and I told him what happened, and uncle said, I told you to stay in the room. Don't go out, don't go out, Khalid, and I told him that I can't stay here. I will go back to where I came from. I went to the manager and told him to take me back to my old job, and that is what I said. I work every day for a small salary or live through this torment. Now dear viewers, if this spine-chilling tale has sent shivers down your spine, don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Your support means the world to me, and it's the only thing that can ward off the lingering echoes of that harrowing night. 
Subscribe for more tales of the unknown and supernatural encounters, and together, let's navigate the mysterious realms that lie beyond our understanding. Until next time, stay vigilant and keep those lights on.